I recently passed the 10k profit mark from Betfair Trading and I thought this was a perfect opportunity to sit back and reflect upon reaching this personal milestone. You know, it's very interesting looking back at the mistakes that I've made and what I've learned to get to this point. And a very crucial realization is that it isn't just about putting in a lot of hard work and a lot of time, it's how you spend that time and what you spend your time working on, which really matters. Two people could put in the same amount of time and the same amount of work but one person can progress much further than the other because they're using their time much more efficiently. It's taken me over three years to get to this point of being in 10K of profit. And the prime reason it has taken this long is because of the way I've spent my time and the things that I've been focused on. There's people who are far more skillful at Betfair trading than I am, but for the betters and the traders out there who are struggling, this video should be very helpful for you for avoiding some of the obstacles that I have encountered on the way to reaching this point. And hopefully you can reach this point quicker than I have managed to do so. The first thing I want to address is a misconception, which in my opinion, stole my Betford progress for an absurd amount of time. I could have been so much further ahead of where I am now without this misconception holding me back. And luckily for you, you won't have to waste your time in the way that I did if you clear this misconception and its ramifications out of your mind. What I'm talking about here is a very specific misconception on what I thought it took to become a profitable trader. Maybe you don't show this intuition the way that I do, but three years ago when I first started, I thought it was a very specific journey a losing trader went on to become a profitable trader. I thought the process of becoming a profitable trader went something like this. You would start off as a losing trader, and at first, for the first couple of years, it would be a lot of hard work to get to the point where the hard work would start to pay off as you would develop a profitable system. And then from that point, yes, you would still have to put in some work, but for the most part, it'd be much easier and you would now be this thing, this thing of being a profitable trader. You was a losing trader and now you are a profitable trader. And as someone who was losing for so long as I was, it almost felt like there was a block in the way from becoming a profitable trader. You just couldn't past this block from being a losing trader to becoming a profitable trader. To be honest, it felt a little bit like there was hidden secrets that profitable traders had, which us losing traders didn't have access to. And it felt like if I could just find out what these secrets were, I too could become a profitable trader. And this mindset led me to wasting so much time looking for secrets, looking for the special type of system. And to be honest, I generally spent about 12 months of time wasted with this stupid mindset on the difference between a profitable trader and a losing trader. Fast forward to today, and I've come to believe that this difference between oh, being a loser or being a winner is a bit of an illusion because the transition that many people want of going from a losing trader to a winning trader will never really take place because this transition doesn't really exist, in my opinion. I now think that whether you've been Betfair trading for 20 years or you opened up your Betfair account just yesterday, you are only really ever as good as your last bet or your last position. The betting markets are changing all the time with new information being priced in faster than you realize. And this idea you go from a losing trader to a winning trader breaks down under scrutiny. Yes, I may have made 10,000 pounds worth of profit from my previous bets, but if the next bet or the next position I take, I place my bet using bad analysis and sloppy reasoning, no amount of previous profit is gonna save that bet from being a bad bet. A negative EV bet is a negative EV bet whether you've made 10K or 10 mil in the past, it really doesn't matter. Of course, a person who is consistently finding value year after year is gonna have very different results for someone who's placing negative EV bet after negative EV bet. But fundamentally speaking, I view the betting landscape, I guess you could call it, as sort of an equal playing field. There'll never be a point where I can mark my stake on this landscape as being a profitable trader because the landscape is shifting and changing all the time with new information being priced in and edges disappearing and new edges forming. And your past profits won't save you from that changing landscape. Past winners and past losers all exist on this shifting landscape and anyone who puts in the hard work has a good chance of finding positive EV angles. And alternatively, anyone who's put in the hard work in the past to get to a position where they've made a lot of money, as soon as they take their foot off the accelerator, 
they will start to lose money as the landscape is shifting all the time. This realization left me with two rather stark conclusions, one kind of negative conclusion, but one more optimistic conclusion. The negative conclusion was that this was always going to be hard work. It would never be a time where I put a whole bunch of hard work in and then it would become sort of a passive income type situation. That was just a fantasy. However, on the more positive side of things, the positive realization was there was nothing magical going on. There was no hidden secrets that profitable traders had that us losing traders were blind to. It was an equal playing field and everyone could get to a point where you're profitable if you just focus on working on yourself and making minor improvements over a long period of time. This realization was so important for me because it freed massive weight off my shoulder as I have more time now to stop wasting looking for little secrets and weird tricks you could do in the market to find something that would be profitable and easy. I could instead just focus on bet after bet, trying to make the best analysis I can and improving over time. On a somewhat similar topic, there's a sort of inferiority complex that I had and to be honest, still continue to try and outgrow at the minute. And it's natural for us people to compare ourselves to people who are better than us. And I suppose that's no different when it comes to bet for trading. There's a feeling that I'm sure we have all had at some point, and that is where we're spending so much time and effort working on something to try and get it right. And then we look on YouTube and we look on Twitter and we see people doing exactly what we want to do, seemingly with very little effort. And it makes you feel rather inadequate, like a failure, in all honesty. I thought about this a lot recently and I have come to believe that this results in people giving up bet fur trading when they could be on the cusp of becoming really successful and the reason is I think people don't fully understand how much progress they're actually making. They can't understand how worse they were in the past compared to what they are like now. This takes me back to when I was younger and I learned to solve the Rubik's Cube. And for a while, I went through a phase of trying to solve the Rubik's Cube as fast as I possibly could. It would take about 20 minutes at first, but after practicing that time would come then quickly, taking 15 minutes, then 10, then five, then just a couple of minutes. But I was still not satisfied. So I'd learn new methods and practice for hours and eventually got to the point when my personal best was just over 20 seconds. The reason I'm telling you this story is because even after solving the Rubik's Cube in 20 seconds, I still felt like an absolute failure because I was always comparing myself to people who could solve the Rubik's Cube in 10 seconds or five seconds. It's only really when you step out of the, the first person situation and take a look at the big picture where you really see how much progress you've actually made. From that starting point where I knew absolutely nothing and didn't know where to begin, to getting to the point all the way up here where I could solve the Rubik's Cube in 20 seconds. I mean, most people can barely comprehend solving this in 20 seconds, yet why did I used to feel like a complete failure for only being able to do it in 20 seconds? And this is very relevant to bet fur trading because the exact same thing happens. This is a graph of time against your progress as a bet fur trader. At the beginning, everything is great with big jumps in knowledge, learning about back bets, lay bets, software, fancy charts, crossover points, and so on. But after a while, the insights get smaller and less frequent. And from the first person experience, it feels like it's getting harder and harder to progress. It's only when you zoom out of the current moment and look back six months or 12 months ago, you can really see the progress that you've actually made. This is really difficult to realize in your own life unless you're keeping a diary or doing some other means of tracking your thoughts. Because what tends to happen is your past self merges together with your current self. And you tend to think that you're the same person as you were 12 months ago, but I can absolutely promise you, you definitely aren't the same person as you were 12 months ago, and you have learned so much in that time period, but your memory pre plays tricks on you, and you don't really see that progress that you've made. I can guarantee you that this feeling of stagnation that you might have, that you're not making much progress as a bet for trading, is a flawed feeling to have, so just reject it. Someone who has been trading for six months is so much further ahead than someone who's been trading for three months, and both of those people are so much further behind than someone who's been trading for two years 
and that person is so much further behind than someone who's been trading for 10 years. Personally, this realization became all too relevant to me when I rewatched some of my old YouTube videos. I basically never rewatch old YouTube videos, but in preparation for this video, I thought I would do so to see what I'd learned. And the results were, to me, rather staggering. This picture of unrealized gradual progression, which I'm talking about, stood out straight away as I saw how much I had improved as a bet for a trader, which I never knew would have been the case if I hadn't been making these videos essentially time stamping everything I knew about Betfair trading at the time each of these videos was made. Take this video, for example. Before I rewatched this video, I assumed my thoughts on this under 2.5 goal strategy were more or less the same now than they were when I made this video back in January 2022. But it's astonishing to me how basic and unimpressive a lot of the information in this video is. This is because when I made this video, my trading skill level was all the way down here and I was completely unaware of all the things I had yet to learn. And now that I've progressed over the last 18 months or whatever that has been since I made this video, I can see all the flaws that are in this video. And, and I can only do that through the hard work that I've put in in that time and new knowledge building on top of the old knowledge and then new knowledge again building on top of that knowledge to the point where my previous self looks unrecognizable to me now. This video is still useful for anyone who is further behind in the bet for trading progress because all of the information in this video will be new information for them which they hadn't considered yet. And that point is very, crucial for what I'm trying to say in this video. We all go on this bet for trading process in our own time, in improving our skill levels at different rates. And there is no way to teleport yourself from knowing nothing to being an expert overnight. But there are key things that you can focus your time on and key, I won't say shortcuts, because that's sort of a bit, bit of a misleading term, but there's certain things you can do to speed up your progress so you improve your skill level faster. And after doing this bet for trading thing for like three years now, these next few things that I'm going to say are the key things that I wish someone was telling me three years ago. Because if they had, I'm pretty sure I'd be much further along than I am right now. Take this video for example, it may take a complete beginner, 30 hours to say, reach a trading understanding to the level of the understanding expressed in this video. For any person who watches this video as the first thing they ever watch related to Betfair trading, will save themselves 30 hours of hard work to learn all of this information themselves if they just went in from scratch. That time save from watching the video instead of doing their own research to get to the same level of knowledge they could use that time to focus on the next thing instead. So let's break down some of the things that I wish I knew. The one thing which I really regret doing is not buying a Betfair trading course as basically the first thing that I ever did when I first heard the term Betfair trading. The first, I don't know what it would be, 50 hours or so of when you start bet for trading, uh, an exciting time, but are also a very time consuming time where some quite basic things can take several hours to, to learn and to understand. Buying a course is a way to engage in a few hours of content where you could bypass that like 50 hours worth of hard work to, to learn the fundamentals of bet for trading. I think a mistake that a lot of people do, and it's certainly what I did, was I put in those like 50 hours worth of work to learn the fundamentals, and then at that point, I got stuck and decided the next thing I'll do is buy a course. Uh, buy a course that's priced for beginners. And then I'd feel like I'd been scammed by watching a course which is full of information which I already know. And that isn't the fault of the person selling the course. That is the fault of me by buying a course priced for beginners when I should have bought the course when I was a true beginner right at the very start because if I bought the course right at the very start I could have watched it and skipped over all like 50 hours worth of hard work that was over several weeks or months or whatever it was. So if you right at the start of your bet for a trading journey buying a course is something that I'd recommend investing in. When you get to sort of an intermediate level it becomes much more difficult to recommend buying a course unless you're buying one which is specifically designed for very advanced users 
But when it comes to that point, the course prices start to be in the multiple hundreds or usually thousands of pounds. For the beginners out there, I don't have a specific course in mind to recommend. My advice would be to basically find the creator that you trust the most. And if they offer a course, buy it. And usually it will be pretty good if you already trust the creator. In terms of pricing, my advice is to always view the price as in terms of hours saved. Think about how valuable one hour is for you in financial terms and say you get paid £15 an hour at work. Use that value as a basis and say if this course is going to save me 15 hours of time then if I'm paying for this course I shouldn't be paying any more than £225 for it. This isn't a perfect calculation by any means but it's a decent real thumb to figure out if a course is worth investing in. Next on the agenda of things to discuss is on a similar topic of saving time and that is something very important that is all about using the tools and resources available to you to save as much time as possible even if they, they cost you money, even if that's a significant amount of money as well. The best example I have of this from a personal point of view is that over the years I've spent way over 100 hours collecting and looking for and processing football goal scoring data and right now today I regret every second of them 100 hours doing that. It was such a waste of time because there are tools and services out there which can do this hard work for you you know like that. There's no need to invest so much time on something so pointless. This isn't a sponsor or anything but the, the software that I use is called CGM Bet and say for example if I wanted to to know the chance of a, of a home favourite who is priced at 1.5 or shorter, if they're 2-0 down after 60 minutes, what probability do they have of going on to win the game? If I wanted to know what the answer of that question was in the past, it would take me a very long amount of time to gather all the data and to figure out how to process it to get me that answer. But now, using CGM Bet, I can find the answer to that query in like literally 15 seconds. Yes, a tool like this of course costs you money and tools in different aspects of the trading that you do will, to save your time will cost money. But the golden rule to realise is that your time is tremendously more valuable than your money. Any tool that you can invest in to save your time is almost certainly always worth the money. My next recommendation is all about learning new information. There's been many times over the last three years or so where I've just been like, it felt like stalled in terms of learning new things. I just weren't learning anything for months and months at a time. So one day I decided I ain't gonna put a stop to this and figure out exactly what to do to learn new things and to, to get better as a bet for a trader. Because for a time, two years ago, one and a half years ago, I would follow like two or three people and I would just listen to everything they would say. But there's only so much one or two people can tell you before they run out of things that you haven't already learned from them. So I had to go out and find new people to learn new things from. Luckily for you, I have actually a practical approach to find the best and most interesting people in the specific area of the betting world that interests you the most. What you should do is find the creator in the betting world that you trust and respect the most, and then go onto Twitter, find their account, and then what you should do is go to the people that they are following. And this person is almost certainly gonna be following a bunch of accounts which will bear absolutely no interest in you. They'll be all their personal interests. But any account in that list that looks like it's sort of related to the things that you're interested in, in the trading and betting world, you should just follow them immediately. Then I give it a few weeks or so, then after that you'll be able to gauge all of these new accounts that you followed and see which ones are useful and which ones are not useful. All the ones that aren't useful, you can just unfollow them and you don't need to think about them again. But all these new useful accounts will be giving you so much new information that you hadn't even considered before. And the process doesn't stop there either because these new accounts that you've recently followed, you can repeat the process again by looking at the people they're following and find new people to follow that way. This is a way to continuously refresh your informational diet and constantly learn new things, which by yourself, if you hadn't followed these people, it may take you years to come to the realization of some of the things that these people will tell you on Twitter for free. The next, I would say, somewhat controversial point that I'd like to raise is something that I only really realized 
in the past month or two. And it's the realization that you don't have to place all of your bets yourself. There are many betting services out there for finding value bet positions. Don't get me wrong, I am very wary of betting tipsters who tip bets on soft bookmakers like Bet365, because sometimes, not always, but sometimes, these people can have a big conflict of interest because they are affiliates to the bookmakers. And the prime source of making money isn't offering winning tips, but it is sending you to bookmakers through their affiliate links. And they only make money when you lose your bets. So I am a bit wary of any tipsters offering bet tips on, on bookmakers for that reason. But there are services which offer the bets on bet for exchange and this conflict of interest now goes out the window. For years, I shared the quite commonly held belief of why would someone sell what they're doing if they could do it theirself type worldview. And this really made sense to me, but it was only until I sat down relatively recently and thought about this and come to the conclusion that this doesn't really make sense and that this intuition is probably not true. Unlike a traditional tipster who might be making most of their money by sending people through affiliate links, a service on the Betfair exchange is only going to make money through getting returning customers continuing to use their product and they're only going to get returning customers if the customer is actually making money from what they're selling. As for the person who is offering the service, selling the service, the why don't you just do your bets yourself criticism doesn't really hold up in my opinion because betting is not a consistent and safe source of income. One month you could win, then you might lose for two months, then a big win, and so on. The point is the results will be profitable over the long term, but in the short term, month by month, the results are gonna vary significantly. And that isn't a sustainable way to live your life as that being your only source of income. So selling the bets in the form of a service is a way to consistently make money from people buying the service off you and also make money long term in your betting and everyone is a winner because the person offering the service has a consistent income to live a normal functioning life and the person offering the service is also winning at betting and all the people buying the service, if the service is good, are also winning from the betting. Everyone is a winner. It took me so long to realize this because my view was clouded by the thought that everyone on the internet wanted to scam you. And that view has held me back significantly. I think for all the times in the past where I've come across something that seems so valuable and so useful, but because there's a paywall, I just impulsively just don't want to get my card out and give someone money for just information. But now I feel like I've finally eradicated that thought process out of my brain to some extent, and I have been following bet for exchange services, namely bets and beers is one. Not as a means to just replace what I do, but to add on top of the strategies that I already run to basically try and add some more profit to what I'm already getting. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. It's not the end of the world. I've not, I don't feel like I've been robbed. I could just simply cancel the subscription at the end of the month. The fact that people follow this service and many, many other betting exchange services across a range of different sports out there makes me realize that it's probably not all just a scam. There will always be non-genuine people out there trying to scam you, of course. So my advice on finding a service which is actually genuine, well, firstly, always look for someone who publishes all of their historical bets. Not just saying, oh, this month I made so much. It's every single bet they've placed and they should be fully published and visible for everyone to see. And normally, if the group is popular enough, there'll be other services and other people who will verify that the bets that are actually being listed as the official result are actually the results that are getting put into the Telegram group or the email group. However, these bets are being given to the people who are paying for the service. There'll be someone who will verify that this is a genuine thing if the, the, the service you're following is big enough. And the last thing to consider if you're joining some form of betting exchange service is to look to see if the group has many long-term members because long-term members are the best indication that 
the group is worth following because you don't get long-term members if it is a losing service month after month. There are many more things that I have learned over the last three years or so since I've been bet for trading, but the video is getting quite long now and I think I covered the most important stuff. So I think I'll wrap it up here. Thank you for everyone who is supporting me on Patreon. I'll put a little visual up on the screen now to show you the perks that you get for supporting the channel if you're interested in that. So yeah, let's hope the next 10K of profit doesn't take the same amount of time as this 10K took because that would be very, very upsetting. Enough of me rambling on. Thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.